Jeremy Andrews, and the Dream Stream presents Rapid Runs. Welcome all back, dreamers and new folk. This is a special edition of Rapid Runs Dream Race Recap. The Dream Racer intended to showcase individuals' talents, ranging from a musical opening act to racing, speedrunning, and even challenge runs over the respective games on display. The fifth event of No Time November's Dream Races was Pugsy Any% Percent for the Genesis by Drex23. Commentary for this run was done by Junkyard Dave. Let's see how it turned out. Right here. Okay. Um, You'll, you'll start the timer. So basically, as soon as I, I hit the start button on the level select here, um, and then the timer ends on the last hit on the boss, I, I'll give you kind of a, a heads up when that is. Perfect. All right, well, then you two take over the show. Cool. So uh, I, I won't really do too much explaining before the run on this. Uh, just kind of we'll, we'll take it in as it goes. That's the best way to experience this. So uh, <laughs> going in three, two, one. Do you mind if I ask you something right off the start? Go ahead, ask me anything you want. Okay, so you said this is in Big Bad game of fun. Is this actually a bad game, or is it a good game? It's just kind of weird and janky? Because I'm always so, kind of curious. Sorry, no, you go. This game definitely has what you would call physics, and if you could see me right now, I'm doing air quotes when I say physics. <laughs> okay. So, um, there are definitely some things that make this game a game that would be in big bad game -a -thon. but there's also a lot of things that make this not a bad game at all uh every time i get it into big bad game -a -thon, they always make the the comment that it's the the best game in big bad game -a -thon, um because it belongs there but it also doesn't um so as you can see basically our objective here is to exit every level um and we have to do some kind of puzzle or something in each level um, to kind of get out. Um, and so, like right here, it's pretty simple. I'm just running to the right and going to the door. But if you were actually to explore around that level, there's all kinds of little things you can find, secondary exits in some levels, and that kind of thing. Um, so in any percent, we will only uh, use two exits in one level. But um, if you were to do like... A, I don't know if you would call it a 100% category or an all exits category of this. There, There's actually a lot of extra stuff in this game that you don't see. Um, and then, yeah, we have boss fights. Um, and they're all kind of similar where you're just fighting a boss with... Uh, the bosses in this game, they give you whatever, whatever you need to kill them. So against that boss, we're just throwing fish at the boss uh, that <laughs> spawns randomly. Uh, and right there, so I just did that big bounce off of that barrel up here and skipped the whole puzzle for that level. Um, and, and there's going to be a lot of that in this run. Yeah, I've noticed um, that actually right away. That, that's intentional or unintentional? Oh, definitely unintentional. They did not, <laughs> they did not, the developers did not intend for me to do that. In fact, um, the developer of this game, Traveler's Tales, they were really known for being, like, really, really good coders. And uh, cool. there is not a ton of glitches in this game. So a lot of what I'm doing is exploiting the physics engine. Um, so what I did there was I tossed that key because there's a lock over here that I need to unlock, but I also need this axe. So I just threw that in a really precise spot and it uh, hit the lock there so I could carry the key at, at the same time, essentially. Get out quicker. So we have underdeveloped kangaroo baby, a combination of flubber, a piece of chocolate, and a clickety clack toy. Okay. I <laughs> yep. <laughs> Shellless armadillo. <laughs> so here we got our first uh, swag item. Uh, I got some sunglasses now. They just make Pugsy look cool. And the speed <laughs> run, they essentially serve no purpose because uh, we're gonna get another swag item here soon. Um, that does serve a purpose, but, oh, well, there, they served a purpose. They took that extra hit there. So, once I get the other item, though, 
Uh, if I were to take a hit, I lose the other item first. Uh, but the other item that I'm going to grab is way more important. So basically after this point right now, we don't get hit anymore in the entire run. Um, and there's a lot of game left here. So we get, we get these sneakers as early as we can. Uh, and they make Pugsy run twice as fast and jump twice as high, which allows us to skip even more of the puzzles in the game. But if we get hit once, we lose them. And then we have to go get get them uh, back. Right um, so, uh, on this uh, level, yeah. we've got to get three objects on switches down here. Um, but we also need a ball. So, hopefully the key goes where it needs to go. Which, it's not going where it needs to go. So, I'm going to have to take it there. Open that up. And then I have to avoid these little bouncing knight helmets. So, I'm going to place this on this switch this on this one technically you're supposed to have four items on the switches there but i found a way to do it with three if you bounce it just right which i got it uh, this is so our next boss which is a giant raccoon <laughs> um but don't trust your eyes here that's all i'm gonna say there is a big twist here uh, and all we do is, uh, there's this, these balls that come through these chutes here. And we step on these different switches on the floor. Um, and the ball will drop. So, pretty precise. There's a, a exact pattern, basically, to get this in the least amount of cy uh, cycles. So, you miss the first one, and then after that, you get every other hit after that. So, did you have this game as a kid, or where did you become aware of it? Yeah, so, um, I messed this up, apparently. Um, so yeah, when I was a kid, uh, I was lucky enough to have a Sega CD. Oh my goodness, that wasn't even a raccoon, it was three raccoons on a unicycle. <laughs> uh, so, I had a Sega CD as my first console when I was a kid. Um, and, uh, there's a Sega CD version of this game also. Uh, which has not as good a music uh, and very, very long load times. So I don't really speedrun that version of the game. Uh, I, I like the 16-bit music way better than the um, than the the full CD quality audio that... Uh, oh, whoops. Okay, here we go. Is on the CD version. So here, uh, we're abusing the water physics by holding an object and just bouncing up and down. And that's kind of how Pugsy can swim. But it's not really intended. Um, here we're gonna abuse physics even further. A lot of these tricks that I do, like, it's really hard to, to explain them. They all happen so fast. But I'm gonna throw this rubber ducky. I'm gonna use this gun. I'm gonna bounce off the water onto the duck. There we go. Perfect. It is really legitimately cool seeing that. Because I'm assuming this is fairly precise and how you have to throw things and stuff. Yeah, very, very precise. But basically, this is like, at this point, this is the only game I speedrun and I've been speedrunning it for four years, so basically, I, I'm the best at this game. Oh, geez, um, this isn't good. <laughs> All right, let's let this guy bounce around. All right, so we need this key up here to uh, open a trap door. It's the only way to kill this raccoon up here that's walking around with the key to get us out of the. All right, so I, I threw the threw the item up there. It opened the trap door, and that's why the key fell down, and then that gets us out. Alright, so this is the level that we're going to do both exits in, in any percent. So, first we're going to go down along the streets here. Also, this, uh, this exit, um, this level, if we have any issues, uh, we'll come back to it because there are backup sneakers here that are really easy to get. So, this kind of becomes the, the first major backup area in the game. If the run dies before here, then you really... You're kind of screwed, but... Alright, so up onto the roofs we go. Saw the smoke puff there, so we should be good here. There we go. Alright. So that opens up a branching path to get to our next boss. Um, also, right here, we gotta take this thing off the wall. 
Um, this is totally a match. It's not anything else. It's not something that you would pass around at a Snoop Dogg concert or anything <laughs> like that. Is a match? Oh, no. I messed up. Uh, that's not going to work. Right, I only see a match there, so it's okay. We're going to restart here. Uh, so the nice thing about this game is that you cannot soft lock. You can reset any level that you want. So you just hit start button A, B, and C, and you're out of there. So we'll we'll uh, we'll fire it up again here, and then try to get this throw. So what I'm doing is there's a thing at the end of this hallway, basically that um, is a rope with a weight on it, and you throw that match, and it burns the rope, and it drops the weight, and launches the key at you, and that's how you get out of the level. So instead of going to the end there, dealing with all those enemies, you just kind of bounce it in a precise spot there. Uh, this level. Um, used to be really, really hard, and I would say it was the worst level in the speedrun, but um, my buddy, who actually has a world record in this right now, uh, actually a real-life friend of mine who got into speedrunning because of me and then decided to be better at the game than me, um, <laughs> found this. But you used to have to throw seven of those coins into that chute there, uh, which was really tough to do consistently, but what I did there was I re-grabbed the coin and uh, basically just drug it down until it hits the trigger um, and now you have to deal with this so this little flower mouse guy has got to kick this eyeball at that switch on the left for us to get out um, and we have found no way to be consistent with this setup here so this is basically the only RNG in, in the entire run and uh, yeah this is just going real great right now what is the swing for RNG like best RNG compared to absolute worst that you've seen that's pretty close to the worst right there, um, and the best is the best is you drop it down there and you and he kicks it over right away. So, does the record have the best? Uh, no, no. Um, so and actually, uh, my my run that second place right now and the world record run are only there's only a one second time difference between the two, and then third place, uh, author blues has. Uh, is one second away from mine. So the top three are all within one second of each other. But I've had runs that are on pace to beat um, beat the world record by like a good nearly a minute and a half and have killed the run and have just never like had the patience to grind it out. So there's a lot of um, potential for this run to be pushed even lower. Uh, so this boss, we got to use this Whoops, I messed up already. The nice thing about boss fights is if you get hit, um, you have a life bar. And uh, yeah, it's it's 1.30 in the morning, way past my bedtime. I forgot how to operate this. So you operate this crane and you have to throw these bags back at the badger here. If you die in a boss fight, do you lose the sneakers? Uh, no, you do not. You just restart. For whatever reason, they decide to be nice to you. And you, you lose a life, but that's it. You do not lose your sneakers. Or your sunglasses if you had them. <laughs> right, so now... Oh, you know, I never explained the whole story of this game. So, if, if you're able to find a, a copy of uh, the manual online, which it should be readily available, there there's, an or, there's a whole story as to what's going on here that the uh, the developers wrote. Um, but I'll sum it up for you. Basically, Pugsy was out getting uh, his daily ration of something called Fugelburnk, which I have no idea what that is, uh, out in his little wooden spaceship. And um, yeah, a, a space pirate shot him down just because he was pissed off that day. And that's literally what the, the story says. Um, he was upset that day and... Just shot Pugsy out of the sky, so he landed on this on this planet. And uh, when he landed, the raccoon stole his ship. So the whole reason that you're massacring all these raccoons is to get your ship back, so that you can leave this planet. And your ship was broken down um, when you crashed, obviously. But somehow, when he gets it back, it, it just works perfectly. So I guess <laughs> the raccoons fixed it for him. So thanks. 
<laughs> so this doesn't involve the match that we saw earlier. That's definitely a match, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not, uh, you know, Fugle Burnt could, you know, maybe, maybe it's, uh, yeah, base um, Snoop Dogg juice or whatever. Pretty sure it's just the name of the brand of matches. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I had to do there was there's two little guys that pat back and forth and um, you have to get the one with the mug to drop you down something. Um, oh, what am I doing? We're going to throw that up there. We're going to throw this up here. And then here we have to keep this one to get the last one. So we're going to do that. So, how much of this routing did you do yourself, then? All of it. Okay, I was just thinking, like, this is a very obscure game to begin with, and you've been running it for yeah, four years. So, when I started running it, um, the only thing that was out there was the task for it. And, uh... The task does a really weird, um... Not human viable exploit, where you grab and re-grab an item, like instantly and you do it repeatedly and you can actually fly um but the amount of button presses that it requires is is not humanly possible whatsoever um so i had to pretty much route the entire thing by myself um after i started running it that's actually how i i met um author blues who started running it a little bit after me but uh he saw my my run get posted because of the world record bot on Twitter. Um, and I guess he had been thinking about running this for a while. So he reached out to me and we became quick friends because of it. Um, and then he started running it and we went back and forth on the world record for a while. And then there was really nobody else that, that really like competitively ran it um, until my buddy uh, White Star started running it also. And um, he put in a lot of time to kind of prove some of the some of the things in the task to be human viable and found some really neat tricks um, that we had never even thought of before which kind of pushed the time a little bit lower um, but in the world record right now there's not a ton of stuff that's you know been recently found just because it's so hard to be consistent in this game that I, I've never been able to put the run together. I'll get half the tricks in a run, but I can't get them all to string together. So at some point, I'm probably just going to have to dedicate my entire life to <laughs> getting the run. But I enjoy playing video games too much to do that. So no, I get that mentality for sure. So if anybody else out there wants to be a hero and wants to do it, <laughs> I will teach you everything you need to know about Pugsy, and you can be my guest. <laughs> Is there anything still in the task that's humanly viable, that's known to be humanly viable, but nobody's gone for it yet? Um, no, not really. I think we've pretty much figured out everything that's humanly viable. Unfortunately, the 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 item regrab thing is just so... Um, good that the that's mostly what the task does so there's there's a very there's very few little tricks that um you know we pulled from the task that actually are human viable so uh, from just like casually seeing this i think this is actually phenomenal like this is very cool um definitely not what i expected at all yeah if you can if you can get past the how just drab the graphics are like the color scheme and everything in, in this game is it actually has a lot of charm and personality that you wouldn't expect um but yeah euro devs at the time in the 90s were known for making games that were just really like gray and brown yeah like, that's their favorite color scheme you, you got the genesis that's capable of all these colors and <laughs> these are the colors you decide to use so no, it yeah, looks I, like it came from the Amiga or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and this game was heavily, heavily influenced by the demo scene and everything. Uh, so it was definitely inspired by um, a lot of Amiga stuff. 
And there is an Amiga port of this game as well. <laughs> of course there is. Like, no, it, it literally looks like an Amiga game. Like, from flagship character to, like, colors, everything. It's, like, straight up Amiga. To my brain, anyway. You love Bugsy? Hey, you're allowed to love Bugsy. All right, so... We are coming up to our next boss here real quick. So... This is everybody's favorite. This next boss coming up is everybody's favorite. Everybody who's ever seen this game, next boss, their favorite boss. Okay, oh, we got the double kill cute, there. Something horrifying. Uh, where is this at? It's right here. I am very tired right now. I had a long day, and I can't remember how to play this game right now, but there we go. All right, <laughs> so best boss really right here. <laughs> okay, Shit. I agree. <laughs> 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 uh, and that's not fire. That's uh, Mr. Pib. Uh, dude, like the twinkle so toadness. The twinkle toes. Yep, that's what we call it. Its actual name is Halitosis the Dragon, but <laughs> twinkle toes is what we call it for sure. Um, yeah, it's a very sassy dragon. <laughs> So I, I I got one extra cycle here over what I wanted to get, but that's fine. All right, so we got one more boss left in the game, final boss, but we still got plenty of levels left. All right, so this level here, we got to get some letters from these ghosts and put them in specific places on the wall. Oh, and there's like all kinds of little Easter eggs and like shout outs to other game developers in this game that I completely forgot to mention. There was one earlier where we saw some gravestones that said Wiz and Liz on them, uh, which was a shout out to uh, Wiz and Liz, who are apparently dead. Um, <laughs> and then this level specifically, the letters that, oh geez, there goes our sneakers. The letters we put on the wall, MRC, are the initials of the developer of Wh uh, Wiz and Liz, MR Chudley. Um, so let's see here. I think this is going to be our best backup for sneakers. I have to take a secret exit here. Not really a secret, it's just the other exit to grab sneakers. A little bit quicker than going back all the way for them. So you actually have to exit the level. If yeah. You Okay. So you go out the left exit here instead of the right, and it opens up another branching path. Um, but unlike something like Super Mario World, where if you were to go back and get like a, a feather, you would actually have to beat the level. There, we don't have to beat the level to exit with the sneakers. We just can exit right away. Uh, and then this level, I'm going to be doing a big, big skip here. So this skip probably saves like a minute over what you're supposed to do in this level. So instead of that little cauldron over there, you're supposed to uh, make a potion. That makes Pugsy really light so that he can float over this pit. Um, instead of doing that, I'm going to take the glasses case here and I'm going to throw it into this pit. And uh, I'm going to jump on it as it bounces back up and get across. If I can do that, that should be it. There we go. Uh, so that, like that. That, sk that skips the entire puzzle of the, of the level. Very cool. Very slick. I like that a lot. And there's an even crazier way to do that that um, my buddy White Stars found, but it's it's not safe at all. So I, I take that that version because it's a little bit safer. But there there is an item that's actually closer to you than the uh, than the sunglasses that you can grab. Uh, but there's an enemy that blocks the way, so you have to like really precisely grab it. Um, but yeah, I don't go for that because it's just not safe. One day, I hope that, you know, the record is so low in this game that we have to go for every unsafe strat. But there's a long ways to go before we get there. How many strats do you skip in theory then? Um, There's probably like a good five or six faster strats that I just don't do in the run. Um, that they say they say very minimal time. Um. I, I think with the strats that there are, like, a low 23 is real possible in this game. And then if we were to use, like, all those other strats, you could maybe push it down to, like, a very low 23 or even possibly a 22. 
uh, but it's just so execution heavy and and the physics are just kind of wonky in this game and you have to just kind of trust that they're gonna work and and they just don't so well on top of that too like this is effectively a one hit kill too like if yeah, you're not dying, exactly. you can't lose the sneakers yeah you cannot lose the sneakers throughout the entire run or or you're not gonna be able to even come close you lose the sneakers you lose a good 30 seconds no matter what so uh what we have to do here is we have to take this uh what started off as a uh orb up and down through these pipes uh alternating it every time that we alternate it from left to right um it increases in size so the first one had one side the heart has two sides so then we pick this up obviously a triangle has three sides and our hint down there is six so we need a six-sided object to exit the level um so we just go back and forth there's no way to skip any of this either so this is like the slowest level but the task the task does the item fly and it just flies up and down over and over again um, <laughs> yeah alternating the uh the pipes so we got one more here we got a diamond now and what could the six-sided object be the secret key to everything here hopefully the dragon from earlier nope it's just just big giant lug nut <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I was let <laughs> down! I believed in the lawyer. This level, this is a really tricky level. So, what we have here is we have to get a key up to the top of this little chamber here to get out. But you can't walk the key past um, this bridge, otherwise, it opens a trap door on you, basically. So, we have to float it on a balloon. Uh oh. What happened there? Alright, oh well. So we have to float it up. If you walk past there, it drops you into that hole. You can't beat the level. Guess my timing was just a little off there. Oh Did no. Hit boxes We've lost... in this game? Uh, yes, very fair. We very lost fair. all of our swag though. We have no, no sunglasses, no sneakers now. <laughs> no but service. luckily we opened up this backup sneaker spot. So. Ah, uh, that was really quick. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad if you open that up. But opening that up is an extra 30 seconds or so. All right, so here we're going to grab a match. See, this is really a match this time. We don't actually light it. We throw it here. We grab a cannonball midair, and then we need this cannonball to get past this fan. If if you hadn't noticed, Pugsy's really light and he gets blown around by fans, so there's some levels where you need to carry objects past fans. It's kind of a, a trope in this game. Uh, and then this is the, the last like real level of the game, so this spiky ball here is the real end game boss of this game. Um, <laughs> As you can see, I messed it up there. You cannot pick up that spiky ball. You can only move it around with another object. Um, and it's... You, we're going up a, a hill here. It's just... It's not good. So... See if it wants to cooperate with us. There we go. That's not... No, 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 no. Also, another big, like, oh, geez. Another uh, really good thing about this game is the soundtrack. I don't know if y'all can hear it or not, but this game has an absolute banger of a soundtrack. If you, like, appreciate video game music, this is a game for you. All right, we got to get this over here to this platform. Just go over there. What? Yeah, that was terrible. All right, this is the last actual level here. So we're just, it's a maze, but obviously I know the solution. Drop through the floor there, and then you run up here and jump down. And we're going to see the final boss. You go down here. I'm expecting, like, the biggest, baddest pirate thing. 
Well, you're close. It's a giant <laughs> raccoon. And that's our wooden spaceship there in the back. They got it hung up and fixed for us, so that was really nice of them. Um, and this boss, kind of difficult if you don't know what you're doing, but after you beat the game, um, it, it literally tells you that if you stand in the middle of the screen, the boss doesn't hit you and that you'll kill the boss in the credits. It tells you in the credits that you can do this. So, don't know if it was on purpose or they, they did it to make it easy for you to replay the game. I don't know. So, we're just going to do this until he reaches one more hit because instead of six hits, he needs seven. So, time will be coming up after the next hit. And that's time. GG. So yeah, Pugsy, uh, he destroyed all the raccoons on the island. Complete genocide. Um, and uh, he got his spaceship back, so now he's just going to cruise on out of there. Uh, I don't know how a spaceship made of wood flies through space, but uh, hey, it works. <laughs> or doesn't spontaneously combust itself, but... Exactly. <laughs> so, one quick question too. Is there an alternate way to beat that boss, or is that like the actual only way? So, you can like kind of time it to where you run by. If basically when he starts firing lasers out of his eyes, um, they they'll they'll track you wherever you go. Um, so the only way to get them to reflect back up at him is if you're in that certain spot when he shoots. Um, so you can like run by and like get one one shot, but if you stand in that one spot, you get two you get two shots on him every single time. Um, so it's it's the quickest way to do it. But if you were brand new playing the game, you wouldn't realize that you could do that. So you would, you know, probably only get one hit a cycle if you were lucky. No, I see. But, dude, that was, like, thoroughly enjoyable. I am actually floored. That was very cool. And I did not expect anything. But that <laughs> can be said, I guess, because that guy looked like, again, a potato. So, uh, Yeah, but, my favorite, uh, what I what I refer to Pugsy as is uh, a Richard Nixon mask filled with inspired <laughs> tapioca pudding so <laughs> uh but, so yeah said, there, there was no there was no pugsy part two even though here in the credits it says keep an eye out for pugsy part two it never happened which is unfortunate because like i said the character in this game not not the best of characters he you know looks like a hammerhead shark and a alien had a baby um <laughs> yeah. but uh, <laughs> but the game the game itself is like very well programmed and like has a lot of really cool things going on and in like the 100% of this there's so many more things that they did that were just kind of like more like each little level was kind of like its own little game and more of like a demo essentially uh for what the physics engine could do they could have done a lot with this and just it didn't catch on so it's unfortunate but uh at least we have the one game that we have and yeah. I've never seen a more European kind of like Amiga ending than this credit yeah, roll. Yeah, this credit roll is the most demo scene thing ever. <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> literally, yes. Like, oh man, they're flexing hard on this one. But yeah, that's that's the whole Pugsy experience. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I amazing. Thank you appreciate so y'all having me. Um, before we let you go officially, Drex, is there anywhere else that we'll be seeing you on in the next couple of weeks besides your Twitch channel? Will you be doing any marathon runs, anything of that sort? Uh, nope. This was all I had planned. Um, I submit this to, to every GDQ event and pretty much every every marathon that pops up, so you never know where you'll see me. I've got it into every single marathon I've ever submitted into, including ESA, but I've never got it into GDQ, so hopefully... Okay. With enough people seeing this, you know, we can this is it, we can right make here. it happen. The dream, if it's on the dream race, is the only other place left for it to go to now has to be yeah. the GDQ, right? <laughs> yeah, <God>. has to <laughs> be. <laughs> well, we hope so, because we really enjoyed our time watching that. That was a lot of fun. No, legit. Like, this this was hidden gem. Like, actual hidden gem, I think, both of a game and both of a speedrun. Because I did not expect anything, both from what I saw in terms of what I thought the game would be like, and what the spirit one actually was like either. Like, this blew me away in two different ways there. Yeah, it was, it was super, super awesome. With that being said, I'm going to let Drex go. I'm going to let Dave go. But
but at the same time dave would you mind posting your schedule one more time for your theoretical phantom event in january <laughs> oh, it's so badly named but yeah sure what even is a pugsy no matter the shape or size we still love a good Pugsy Rung as its quirkiness grew on us all night long. That was exciting. Our next live event for the Dream Races will be Jumpstart January on Tuesday, January 18th at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Want to watch live? You can stream this right now at twitch.tv backslash General Andrews. Remember to like, comment, watch the whole damn video, and subscribe.